Okay, so what the hell is butt rock? Butt rock describes this typically mainstream rock sound that features generally loud, heavy guitars and huge vocal hooks. For my money, it's kind of like the post nu metal equivalent of what commercial rock music sounded like back in the 80s. The term itself seems to be derived from American radio stations such as Sirius XM that would play nothing but rock. And I first encountered the term when Finn McKenzie used it on the punk rock NBA video, The Misunderstood Genius of Butt Rock. Now, I would argue that Alter Bridge's sound isn't a million miles away from the likes of Shinedown, Three Days Grace and Blackstone Cherry, and especially so on their debut album, One Day Remains. Coming out of the ashes of the demise of Creed in the early 2000s and featuring the free instrumentalists, this first Alter Bridge album is something of a transition point between that previous band and the sound that Alter Bridge would go on to define later on. I would actually compare this album to Muse's first album, 1999's Showbiz. And the comparison I would make is that with both bands, we seem to get debut albums that do feature foundational elements of the band's sound, but really it would then be the second album that makes that true, definitive statement on who these bands are. One Day Remains does have Miles Kennedy's incredible vocals, but not his guitar playing. And indeed, although songs like Find The Real and Metalingus do feature heavy, down-tuned riffs, we would see the later Alter Bridge flirt a lot more with progressive rock and heavy metal influences to create these more technical and weighty guitar parts. In his own video about Muse, Finn McKenty sort of... He described the band as having this rare combination of two traits that they have both amazing technical proficiency and amazing songwriting skills. You see, I think you can make the argument that a band like Creed, although certainly had huge hit songs, never really displayed the most like technical chops in their songs. And sadly, Alter Bridge lack any huge mainstream hits and so therefore I guess you could put that band more in the category of having the technical skill. But like I said that is a shame because when we look at One Day Remains there's an amazing killer free song streak kicking the album off. Let's start with Open Your Eyes the third track which is both most akin to Creed and perhaps the most butt rock on here. You see this is a huge power ballad and one that does follow kind of pop rock formulas. Miles is singing low in the verse and then he sings high on that bombastic four chord chorus. And indeed much of the structure of the song is akin to what we would expect from a general power ballad. I dare say you could even make the argument that the lyrics on this one aren't quite as deep as what you might see on other Alter Bridge songs. Personally, I really like Find The Real. I think it's a killer song with a great riff. But again, you could maybe look at its structure and argue it's a little bit formulaic. We have the riff, we have the verse being sung over the riff, and then of course we have a huge chorus. And so, when talking about the future of Alter Bridge, I would say the best foreshadowing of that out of these three songs would be that title track, One Day Remains. We have a riff here that is slightly more technical, uses the wah pedal, which of course Tremonti loves using. And I think in terms of the lyrics as well, it gives you more of that, again, that foreshadowing of what Miles Kennedy would later do. These sort of philosophical musings on both his atheism and the meaning of life in general. I talked about that killer free song streak that opens the album, and indeed for me, Burn It Down does break it. For me, this is very much an album track. It isn't as hooky or as memorable as those first three songs, and actually the lyrics took me by surprise. Especially the fact that the song is solely written by Mark Tremonti. As you see, its references to heavy drinking and an empty bed remind me much more of what Miles Kennedy brought to the fold with his later work with Slash. I've got to be honest, a band named Auto Bridge, I wouldn't necessarily associate these lyrics with. And for me personally, it's those general philosophical musings that Miles Kennedy sings about that I find fit the band much better. 
But it's not just the songs that, you know, give this album some similarity with butt rock. We have to talk about the production. Now, for better or for worse, this is the only Autobridge album that is not produced by Michael Elvis Bisquet. And indeed, it is somewhat of a relief hearing this album and not hearing Bisquet's seemingly like brick wall approach to heavy compression. But by 2024 standards, I would dare argue that this is somewhat a dated sound that owes a lot to that early 2000s post grunge scene. The album was produced by someone named Benjamin Gross, who'd also worked with other butt rock bands such as Seven Dust and Siva. And so you could argue that this sound is intentional. Indeed, I'm not gonna rag on the album too much for this. Again, it was the early 2000s. This was a popular sound at the time. We must remember that the band were coming out of the ashes of Creed, who themselves have that post-grunge sound. And part of me wonders if the label had any say here. Alterbridge uh, were on Wind Up Records at the time, and I have to admit that their story with this particular record label that supposedly screwed them over is a very, very interesting one, and perhaps one that I will come back to later on. But as I said, this is a label that also represented Evanescence and Siva. And so there might have been some oversight, or it might simply have been the band members being pragmatic. Remember that technically this is the first album by a new band, right? And I don't know how much leeway the record label would have given the band just because Creed had big hits in the past. It could be that Tremonti and co very much wanted to stick to that popular sound because at the end of the day, the record needs to be commercial as well as artistic. Could there exist an alternate reality where Alter Bridge took their place among their peers as a butt rock band? I think had the band only tinkered around the edges of One Day Remains and stuck to that same formula, then this very much could have been the case. Instead though, we got Blackbird, which I think benefits a lot from Miles Kennedy and Elvis Busquets input. Let's not forget that this is a producer that the band members have continued to work with and talk about very highly. And although I'm sure that Mark Tremonti himself wanted to break boundaries somewhat and explore new sounds, I think that together, Kennedy and Tremonti have made for an incredibly creative and dynamic songwriting duo. So One Day Remains is something of a transition album, but I'm not gonna fault it for that. In fact, I would argue that actually it was a necessary transition and still a very important and worthy album in its own right. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, maybe you'd care to check out my reaction video to March Monty's latest effort, Just Too Much. I have other video essays you might care to check out, or indeed some original music, the closest to butt rock probably being my song, The Chambers of a Broken Heart. So I'll link that in the end screen for you. Take care. And I very much hope to see you in another video.